Welcome back to the three months of modal logics here at Carneades.org. This is going to continue to be a sequel to 100 Days of Logic. Today we're going to be continuing with temporal logic for all of November, looking at the density of time. Once again, density, like connectedness, is going to be a new property of relation that we're just learning about here to help explain the precedence relation in terms of time. So let's take a look. Density is a new property of relations. So relations, specifically binary relations, are going to be things that relate to other things, that tell us the relation between two other things. And we haven't seen this one before. When we say that a particular relation is dense, we mean that for every two objects that bear that relation to each other, there's going to be a third that sits between them, after the first but before the second. So basically, if we have any two objects that bear some relation to each other, and we say that relation is dense, there's going to be some third object that's after the first but before the second. It bears that relation both to the first and the opposite to the second. Hopefully that makes sense. We're going to talk about it a lot more as the video goes on. So one way to think of this is in terms of numbers. Take the set of all integers positive, negative, and zero, non-decimals. Just basically full numbers, but positive, negative, and zero. And compare that to the set of all decimals. The succession relation, so that's the relation that numbers bear to each other. So one succeeds zero, two succeeds one, basically is after in a timeline. For the first set is not dense, since there need not always be an integer between any two given integers. While there are plenty of integers that have other integers in between them, between 0 and 100, there's lots of integers in there. There are some integers that have no other integers in between them. Between 39 and 40, there is no integer, there's no whole number, there's no positive non-decimal that's in between 39 and 40. So the set of all integers is not going to have a dense succession relation. However, the succession relation for the set of all possible decimals is going to be dense, since there will always be a decimal between any two other given decimals. Just think of Zeno's paradox to understand why. Basically, you can always continuously cut a distance in half. So, let's say between 0 and 1, there's going to be the decimal in between them 0.5. Between 0 and 0.5, there'll be 0.25. Between 0.5 and 1, there'll be 0.75, and all the way down. Basically, you're always going to be able to subdivide our set of all decimals. So the set of all decimals is dense, whereas the set of all integers was not. The question we must answer is, are the instance of time dense, like decimals are, or not dense, like integers are. If you think that the precedent relation is dense, that always there's going to be another instant between any two instants, you would include the condition below. If you think not, that there are, if you go far enough down, going to be two instants that are right after one another, and there's no instant between them, you might include one of the properties in the following videos. But logically, if you think that time is dense, you would include this property. For all x and all y, if x precedes y, that implies that there exists some z such that x is before z and z is before y. We we'll represent that as dnpt in proofs. Up next, we're going to look at kind of some contrasting properties to density, talking about predecessors and successors in time. Watch a new video every single day for three months here at Carneades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.